Here is a compilation of recognized bankers and asset managers and what they have said in regards to the Bitcoin ETF before I jump into our meme coin review for the weekend. Within the last few hours, Coindesk released an article stating that BlackRock, Valkyrie, name authorized participants include JP Morgan for Bitcoin ETF. Now, what does this mean? Well, BlackRock was the first applicant to announce who will acquire Bitcoin on behalf of BlackRock. As they are not legally allowed to purchase the cryptocurrency itself. This is simply what is called GT segregation, which prevents the same person who initiated an action from the person who approves it. This reduces the risk of inviting conflict of interest or regulatory non-compliance into a situation, both of which can increase the chances of legal actions. So things like this are normal. Now, I understand most people and educated folks in crypto do not like JP Morgan, and some industry experts were surprised to see JP Morgan's name in the BlackRock's filing, given CEO Jamie Dimon's strong negative stance on Bitcoin and the crypto sector in general. I just don't get it. And just earlier this month, Dimon said he would ban crypto when asked by Senator Elizabeth Warren if he were the government as he is deeply opposed to the asset class. What a mixed bag we have to deal with here. Here is that clip we compiled on December 6th. I've always been deeply opposed to crypto, Bitcoin, etc. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance, and that is a use case. Uh, because it is somewhat anonymous, not fully, and because you can move money instantaneously, and because it doesn't go through, as you mentioned, all these systems have been built up over many years, you know your customers, sanctions, OFAC, it's, they can get bypass all of that. I, if I was the government, I'd close it down. Okay. But on a much brighter side, we have famed investor Mike Novogratz, CEO of Galaxy Digital, and Bitcoin Bull reacting to both Senator Warren and Jamie Dimon. He thinks the Bitcoin ETF will be approved early next year. Here is that clip from the Galaxy Brains podcast taken on December 29th. What drives me freaking crazy is when Elizabeth Warren or Jamie Dimon or, you know, at times Janie Yellen said, well, I don't really see value in it. I was like, the gall, the arrogance that since you don't see value, there's no value. But Abby Johnson, well, she must be stupid, <laughs> right? Stan Druckenberg, stupid. Ray Dalio, dumb. Uh, Jeff Yoss, dumb. Pete Brigger, dumb. Like the arrogance. You're looking at some of the best investors that have walked this earth that say, hey, there's some value in it, right? Bitcoin's value is the social construct. I say it has value. You say it has value. Therefore, it has value. I don't care what Elizabeth Warren says. But frankly, I don't care what Jamie Dimon says. Right. And they have been proven wrong. And the group of people that care about it have been proven right. Don't think you're smarter than the market. Yeah. And market value. And listen, it. you can decide I don't want to buy it. Warren Buffett decided totally. he didn't like it. Charlie Munger, you know, God rest his soul, passed away hating Bitcoin. Uh, they were wrong in the, in the time frame to operate. It doesn't matter. Charlie Munger made so much money. He went to, I'm sure he passed away with the biggest smile on his face. He was a great mentor to people. You don't have to be in every, no. you don't have to be in every asset, right? I wish I bought Apple stock 20 years ago. I remember buying a bunch of it. I sat with Peter Thiel one day and he convinced this group of people that Apple, Microsoft, Google, these weren't tech stocks, they were monopolies. And I was like, it just clicked. Every once in a while an idea clicks. And so I went out and bought a bunch of it, all of it. And it had a great year. They were probably all up 30% that year. And I sold them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was 2014. Yeah. How has it done since then? It's shocking. <laughs> once you realize something is a monopoly, you never sell it. And then we have Kathy Wood a friend of Mike Novogratz, and she is also CEO of ARK Invest, coming on Bloomberg to hype up the Bitcoin ETF conversation. And here is the clip from earlier this week. Whether it's you or somebody else in terms of the first um, spot Bitcoin ETF actually getting approval. 
Uh, well, we think the probabilities have gone up because the SEC has been highly engaged compared to what was happening before. Before, it was just denying approval, denying approval. Uh, and we just kept putting our uh, filing in again, you know, try, and <laughs> try, 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 you know, yeah. dogged and determined. And uh, so here we are. We think we're, we're first in line, and that's why there is this uh, January 10th deadline. Line. Um, but we like the idea that the SEC has been so engaged, and it's not just with us, it's others as well. We think a number of uh uh, a number of funds could be approved at the same time. Uh, and they've been asking not only one set of questions, but follow-up questions. And uh, again, that's a very good sign. Well, speaking of and, engaged... Oh, go ahead, please. No, 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 yeah, The last few questions have been very technical. Mm. And uh, uh, and so more de rigueur, and, you know, you'd expect them to be asking these questions as we head toward an approval. Now, it's not 100% certain. And uh, so we want to make that clear as well. Um, this is the SEC, and uh, we never know, you know, what might happen along the way. And just out of the blue, coming from nowhere, as I was just making this video while breaking news, Coinbase head of custody has been replaced as the exchange gears up to provide services for the spot Bitcoin ETF applicants, says Bloomberg News. But, but, but why is Bitcoin down then? could be that people are covering their positions in anticipation of a massive move upwards. We have to wait and see, guys. Exciting times. And we just cannot leave out one of the biggest Bitcoin bulls ever, and that is Michael Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy, coming out on CNBC on December 19th, just last week. And if you do not know who he is, I am sorry, more than likely... You are the exit liquidity for people who will dump your bags on. So get with the program. Here is what he had to say. So along those lines of how much is the possibility of a Bitcoin spot ETF contributing to this recent rally, geopolitics, risk on rally that we've seen more broadly across markets amid the Fed pivot, and also next year's halving. Are all of these factors that are contributing? They're all factors. Education makes a difference. Institutional adoption makes a difference. The spot ETF news is good news. Uh, you know, loosening of monetary policy is good news. Inflation anywhere in the world drives Bitcoin adoption. And of course, the halving is going to cut the available supply of Bitcoins for sale in half from the miners. And so we've got uh, a confluence of very bullish milestones over the next six months. And I think uh, smart money is uh, investing into that ahead of it. So you guys let me know, are you a super bull or bear? Do you think these ETFs will still be approved on or before the 10th of January? If you have been listening to me for a while on this channel, well, you know my answer already. Regardless, all of these clips from Mike all the way to Kathy are exciting news, extremely bullish, and a great way to end 2023 with hope, optimism, and positivity for the crypto space in general. And the crypto fear and greed index is hovering around 68, proves it. And this number symbolizes that people are optimistic, about the markets, but I also have some bad news to share over here as well. From a recent INX report that literally came out 40 minutes ago, there was an attempted hack on the INX exchange of unauthorized trades, resulting in a loss of $1.6 million. Good news is that INX was able to take immediate action against the security vulnerability and to investigate the nature and scope of the incident. It is important to say INX customers were not affected by the incident. And the security breach at the third party provider did not have any impact on the platforms and servers of INX. Also, no personal information or other data of INX's customers were compromised and your exchange is fully operational. Now, we do have a referral link to INX. And these are the early growing pains exchanges will have to go through as they build up their security and learn along the way. There is no free risk on any financial exchange on the planet. And that is what we have to deal with as consumers. I know 
It is what it is at this time. So not your keys, not your cryptos also applies here. To end on a fun note, every Friday, I provide a relaxed recap of social and meme tokens that we will keep track on until we roll into the next bull cycle of 2025. And by then, your narratives might have changed. So we will see how strong they really, really hold up. And we will start with the social token named Million Token, up 21% in the past seven days. Next, we have Bonk, the famous meme coin on Solana, down 20% for the week. And the next two meme coins are also on Solana, and those are Miro, which is up 22% for the week. And while Samo is down about 34% for the week. We have Toshi, the meme coin on the Coinbase blockchain known as Base. That is down 30% for the week. We have Fufu token, which is a token mentioned on Crypto Banter. That is down 47% for the week. Ouch. And that is a wrap up of Fun Fridays on a less serious note as we end the week. And for my predictions for next year, I guarantee a Black Swan event will happen. And it's also election season in America. Boy, what a coincidence, right? And whenever these planned Black Swan events occur, financial markets do behave funny. And I say funny, which also provides opportunities as well. Just pray that you live past it. You just have to take it for what it is. But the worst thing you could do is panic and overreact. Just remember, it's all fake. And they are simply just trying to scare you and get you to be mad at certain people or groups for no apparent reason. So you can, at the end of the day, vote a certain way. I'm just going to leave it as that. Regardless, try to ignore all the noise and emotional social media around it. Have a great 2024. Bye.